think is going to become super important in this next decade is the ability for teachers to train students who come into universities how to survive in this world. Um, we're seeing a big shift toward a lot of people get their doctorate in piano performance and they don't teach at universities. Um, they either teach online per, uh, or build their own studios or sometimes develop their own YouTube channel and sometimes do way better than college professors financially. So how are we preparing those students? I think the ability to do video is going to become absolutely essential that we train our students how to put really good videos together. James Lent has this next portion of the session where he did this similar thing and he's gonna show how he did it for his group. James, are you on? Yes, I'm on. Okay. All right. Can so, you share uh, your screen with us? So I'm going to show you. Um, I teach collaborative piano at UCLA, and we always do a combination of uh, duos, trios, larger projects. And I always like to have something that the whole class is in on. And that was a big challenge in the spring quarter since we were completely online. But using iMovie, and we did two different projects that involved the entire class. One of them was very much metronome based. I wanted them just to record and video themselves with a metronome at a specific marking. And, um, and then we used iMovie to edit that together. That's the first one I'm gonna show you. This is the Bumble Boogie arrangement for two pianos, eight hands that I, that I cleverly told them to play in different octaves so that we could utilize more people in more parts. And so I'll show you a little bit of that first and then a tiny bit of the Beethoven symphony movement that we did with a conductor from YouTube. So there's like two different approaches, one with a metronome, one more conducting bass. So here's the little bit of Bumble Boogie. If you don't know Bumble Boogie, it's a really fun, cool piece that's probably great for a lot of your, your students. Dr. Lang, can you share your screen, please? Sharing screen um, here. Oh, I need to start again, new share. Double check that your audio is- Got it, got it. Computer audio, okay. Who is Bumble Boogie? Who's the composer? So Jack Fina is the original composer. And, um, and I think in the title thing here, we might get the arranger here, let's see. More of students collaborating with themselves, with others in the class, and with our class violinist, Stephanie Nagler, who's been playing for our class for many years now. I hope you enjoy our concert. Thank you. There we go, there's our arranger. <clears throat> Can you go to full screen view? Full screen. something that was done very much metronome based and edited into iMovie. Um, and then I also wanted to have the experience of them doing something with more rubato and musicality and freedom with a conductor guiding them. So I picked a recording of a Beethoven symphony movement on YouTube that I liked that had a lot of conductor view where you could really sync with a conductor. And here's a little tiny bit of that one as well. Uh, let me cue to that. Will you share your screen with us again when you add a second, please? Yes. Here it's it's catching up. Here we go. 
So, oh, it's worth to get rid of that. So, what was really interesting about the contrast in those two assignments? One, you know, one was very easy to edit because everyone was playing to a click and exactly the same tempo and no rubato. This other one required quite a bit of editing to get everyone to get synced, but it did enable everyone to have their own freedom and flexibility. And what was also nice about that assignment is. Um, you know, it was the eight hand version of that Beethoven Symphony number no. seven, second movement. And um, it was easy to, for the most advanced students in the class, to give them more challenging parts and for the, for the less skilled players in the class to give them, you know, much easier parts or even say, just focus on left hand or just focus on right hand. And then to produce that into a cohesive product that the entire class was featured. Um, gave them a sense of real satisfaction at the end of our journey of online for an entire period. So James, can I ask you, do you, what, what place in future of education at colleges does video have? I think, I think it's important. Um, just not only are we just such visual people now as a society, but I just think that um, you should look at the music industry overall. Um, it seems that the things that are really becoming successful always have video attached to them. It's really rare any, any time that anything makes it big without a video. So I think that we are moving in towards an era where video is integrated with audio as much as possible because um, it just seems like humans need to see something in, in addition to hearing it. Has has everybody or anybody else by the show of hands, have you noticed the same thing, a move toward video and the importance for students knowing how to do video? Yeah, it, it's insane. Like I didn't learn that when I was working on my doctorate. I don't know if you had your professors teaching you that, but it has become like part of our world. You just can't do business without knowing how to produce good, good, good videos. Um, that brings us into another, I have, a friend who's done his doctorate in piano performance. Now he's doing his own YouTube videos, except that his sound isn't very good. And I hear other videos of people who 
don't even have any degree and the sound is so much better. Um, so in this new era, we're going to have to start working on the quality um, creativity, uh, sound quality and as well as video quality and editing. So I would highly recommend as part of your, your things that you add this semester is do video projects. Figure out a ways, even if it's letting the students innovate their own ways to do it. James, when you did this video project, would you say that they learned not only um, skills for like performance skills, but they also learned other skills that were very beneficial that you didn't even think about? Absolutely. When, I, when we started that class online, I was just praying that collaboration would happen and that music would happen. <laughs> and um, once we got about three weeks in and I was watching, because I, I, I used the approach, let's just start with collaborating with yourself so you can learn how to use technology and we can refine your video shots and we can refine the way you look and sound and use your mics um, and then collaborate with someone else in the class and then collaborate with a non-pianist and then, um, then kind of free choice, do what you want for, for a project. And then the final project was the whole group. And what they came at me with at the, in our final meeting when we zoomed out on Zoom and we just had a discussion about how everything played out, they said that they felt like my class was the only music class they had virtually online all, all the, whole, the whole period where they felt like they were getting equal instruction in technology video editing and they never imagined when they took my class that they would get all of that in one foul swoop in addition to feeling like they were challenged musically so they were super appreciative that i was a very friendly guide for that experience and they seemed to really enjoy that and uh yeah i was i was i was relieved because we all know how much evaluations matter these days <laughs> yeah, and, and i i also feel like you probably learned I learned as much as they did. As they did, if not more. Yeah, it was hard. I was I was constantly trying to stay one week ahead of the students, and it was not always easy. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, how does it feel to though to learn something new like that that's successful? Awesome. It's it's now now I'm not I'm not nearly as scared going into the next uh, fall going into fall knowing that it's probably going to be online. Um, at least, and I, and I have new ideas I want to try and new technologies I want to try and um, there's all kinds of things I want to integrate that, that I didn't get to on the first go. And so James, let me give you just a couple of um, creative ideas. Maybe you can take some of these. Um, the rest of you can. Hey, I'm first, share my a question or comment. What's that? Oh, wait. Rose, I think has a question or comment. I saw a comment. Somebody said, kudos, James. Uh, well, Rose was trying to, I meant she's trying to ask a question or make a comment. Yeah. Can, I, can I ask James a question? You said that they recorded with a metronome mark, but yeah. then we, in, in the video, there was no metronome clicking. Yeah, so, so I, how, required, how I, I required that they use a metronome in their ear. So, so I, and I also required that the metronome in their ear be invisible. So they had to do it on the side that was not the video camera side. Excellent. It was, that, there were so many details, I cannot, I, I, there were like 208 details <laughs> that I never would have imagined were important that mattered that Absolutely. came up over the series of classes. And that's what enabled us to do that final project because everyone had finally aced all the details. And then and which, we were ready to come together. Sorry, but which app do you use for your and metronome? That, and uh, so for, for, I just told them, I want this at one, I want this at 144 and get you I, I encourage them to use the pro metronome app and use the head, headphone with that is what i encourage so can i show you an e even easier solution for the metronome i would love it this is like for dummies um and it's amazingly cool because you don't have to worry about skipping beats or anything uh, it's like a built-in metronome so let me show you the video that i put together and then how i put it together uh, let's share my screen. And this was just kind of an experiment. I just woke up one morning and said, I'm going to try this. So here we go. Oh, wait, I got to make sure my audio is shared. It is now. Josh, can you give me some feedback? Does it work, my audio? 
Hey. Yeah. Do you want to do Star Wars? All right. Let's do it. weren't exactly in sync <laughs> actually i intended for them not to be in sync just because it's a little silly and so at the end it's just like ah, that's funny um so now if in the past you would have thought that's something that would take a lot of video editing right uh oh there goes mine whoops i gotta try to pause that um now, how long would that normally take a student to, to put together? Normally, probably take a long time, right? Um, however, it only took two hours to do the entire project. So what I did was I used Piano Marvel for that song and I had it be the metronome. So let me share my screen and show you what I mean about that. I'm going to go over here, go into Piano Marvel, and I'm going to put, and by the way, you can put any music you want, you can upload into Piano Marvel. So you can upload your own music and then use this as you'd like. Um, let me just type in Star Wars. Aaron, while you do that, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Is it just as easy to upload videos on to other people's music that is already there, like tutorials, or is that something that you would need to just use YouTube for? Say that again. Is it as easy to do what? You know how on some of the stuff on Piano Marvel, you've included a really cool tutorial? Yes. If that you're using music that doesn't have that, is it easy to create your own and upload it to Piano Marvel directly? Ab absolutely. Let me, okay. let me give um, everybody an example of what you're talking about. So if I open the Star Wars theme here, um, let's say this wasn't in there, you can actually upload your own music and do a tutorial so that you're, you show your hand, uh, you know, maybe I should show, let me go back to one that has a better idea. Um, so this is Scale Ninja. Scale Ninja, let's just do this one because it's two octave scales which we teach with our students. The C major, let's say you wanted to do a tutorial similar to this one. Notice how I created this one with, uh, let's skip over here. Finger on E, and so I just finish walk on the pinky, and come back the down. Scale, they can see my hands really clearly, and you Cross can also see over the, to the third the finger on E. Well, the blue line, that blue cursor, actually follows you through as you're talking. It used to be in the olden days. If you wanted that, you'd have to go into Photoshop and, or, and put, you know, blue mark with every note, and move it around. But now you can do this like instantly. 
it just record the video of you playing and talking while you talk, record your hands, put those two videos together uh, side by side and you have this. E over to the fourth finger on B. So yeah, uploading your own music is really easy to do and you can create tutorials for your students. Um, those are super handy. Great question. The thing I was going to show you was that Star Wars one and how you use it as a metronome. So Star Wars, let's go back to this one. And so I am playing, you can either do the Primo or the Secondo. I personally, what I did was I did both. So the uh, Secondo's down here. And to set it up with the metronome, what, I, what you need to do is just make sure you and your partner come over here and you have the exact same metronome setting. And then as you play it, you'll just record One, yourself two, and you can read set, the sheet go. music. When you go to put those two videos together, everything will be perfectly in sync. And you're actually reading the sheet music with that metronome that's following you along. Um, I found that to be su a super, super easy way to put two videos in perfect synchronization together. So you just do the same thing with like the, like an earbud in the ear that's not showing or something like that to- Oh, uh, actually, uh, I, I know do what something you do. even I do something I know even what you different. do, but I don't think all students can do that. That's true. I don't know, James, if you notice the difference in sound quality between your videos and the video that I showed you that I did. Well, yours is all sounded like it was all MIDI directly to keyboard, right? I used a, a Clavinova. Uh-huh. And I recorded that. And it is like pure, pure sound. So you don't have any of the out of tune problems or the, the air sound that you get when that you was my least the favorite microphone. that was my least favorite part of my class situation yeah so i have another question um so uh, we have some students with keyboards some students with pianos tuning also can be a problem yes it so can. how do you how do you put them together and not have like the you know the tuning problem you can't even get a tuner to go to your house anymore because of COVID too. <laughs> so, so that is actually a decent problem. How did you handle that, James, with yours? I, I think I just kind of lucked out in that, in that it was not as awful as it could have been. <laughs> there are ways in some of these softwares like iMovie and other kind of more advanced things. I mean, the, it's deep, just as in playing the piano is deep you can dive really deep into it, but there is ways to actually um, kind of line things up if people so wanted to, if someone was like a whole yeah. tone off or something. Yeah, I remember, I remember that my, um, my, I had my two editing students who were working on it in tandem, and they did tell me there was like, this chord sounds totally out of tune. I was like, well, can you just mute somebody to fix it? And they're like, yeah. And so like, there was a culprit and we would just mute the culprit for yeah. that chord. And then That's perfect. You know, it all worked out. So, so that, was, that was our student. <laughs> Here's my recommendation for getting into video editing. Don't worry about the details. Just don't worry about them. Just go ahead and do your first project and deal with the details one step at a time. Because if you don't, I mean, there's no way you can learn all this stuff until you actually get in and start doing it and then solve problems and say, how am I going to make it better? How am I going to do this? How, how do you deal with copyright? So if you put it onto like YouTube, the YouTube the video you had, copyright. the Star Wars video you had going behind that, did you have to get permission? YouTube handles it all now. So oh. what happens is Star Wars has a deal with YouTube where they actually get, um, they get money from views. And so if you get a million views, unfortunately they get all the money. <laughs> You don't get the money, but it also allows you to be more innovative with your class if you don't care about making any money on it, which has <laughs> happened over, over, I think, the past two years. Oh, my my uh, seventeen year old said and said, if you get three copies copyright strikes, they'll delete your channel. So. 
I guess what is the copyright strike? Like, what exactly does that entail? Hey, Josh, what's the copyright strike? I think the copyright strike has changed a little bit in that, and like, like I've noticed lately when I upload things, usually they give you a little warning and they say, this might have copyright infringement. Do you care if you monetize on this video? And then if you click that, I don't care if I, if I monetize on this video box, then you're cleared. You're using, you knowingly are using copyrighted material and you're just agreeing not to make money if you hit a million views. And then until you get close to a million views, you don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Um, I think there's a, uh, it's a lot has changed. They put in billions of dollars towards this, this uh, lawsuits and going to court with it. So they have done a lot of, a lot of work and laws have been changed over the past two years. Um, it's very likely you're not getting a million views on your channels. You're just learning to do stuff. So I don't think you will find any problems with it. James, I have, I'm sorry. I have a question, James. I noticed uh, in the Beethoven, which that was wonderful. You had a bassoonist, you had a flautist. Did they play their own instrument because maybe they did not have a piano? How did you give them that so, choice? <laughs> so I always encourage a few non-pianists to enroll in the class so I have more people to collaborate with. Um, otherwise, my class violinist would go nuts being the only person to collaborate with. So I always encourage a few and, and people have come to realize they get unique skills in my class. And then those instrumentalists that enrolled they were the ones that we were raving the most about the experience because they never would have gotten this stuff in any other class. So um, they were so happy to be involved. Yeah. Uh, anyway, takeaway from this video, yes, is super important. They learn so much from it. Um, they're super engaged and don't get hung up on the small details. The, the biggest thing is to don't be scared. Jump out there and start doing video projects yourself. Things you don't know, just YouTube it figure it out how to do it. Um, I think we're pioneering a new field that is not going to go backwards. Video is going to become increasingly more important in, in lessons.